Quadrant Centennial Chaos Lecture by Professor Maxim Konchevich from IAPS. He will continue his lecture on Morse Novikov theory for holomorphic one forms and wall crossings. Okay, please. Okay, thank you very much. And I'll share my screen. Uh -huh. A second. Yeah. Just a second. Full screen. Should be seen there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we'll start now with uh, some formal definitions. What is stability structures in the graded algebra? And uh, uh, explain that uh, the example from last talk from Morse Noiko theory is a typical example of such structure. Uh, so the the name stability structure is uh, not uh, terribly appropriate in this case. It's it's kind of has, has some historical origin from theory of Donaldson Thomson variance and which now applies to a different situation. So there is a better notion of wall crossing structure, which I will mention later, and uh, which is kind of supersedes the notion of stability structure. But I'll start uh, start with this. So uh, the stability structure. Uh, in graded algebra is given by the following data. You have a, a finitely generated abelian group, and sometimes it's convenient to assume it's free, sometimes not. Uh, I, I kind of feel vacillate between two options. Mm. There's really not much difference. Yeah, uh, uh, so this group, it's, in its origin from physics is called charge lattice, and there is some additive map from this group to C, or R2, it's called central charge, and uh, we extend it by our linearity to uh, real vector space gamma r obtained by extension of scalars to r. Okay, uh, it just for notations we have the r and gamma r. Uh, then we have a Lie algebra over rational numbers mm, graded by uh, this lattice gamma. So it's sum of component and commutator goes to the sum. And then we have a collection of elements in this grid components for all, all small gamma. In fact, you'll see it excluding zero. Yeah, so it's very stupid data. And there is only one axiom for this thing, uh, which uh, uh, which called support property. Mm. It has many forms. I'll start with original form. The, the original form is the following. There is this is quadratic form on this real vector space, gamma r. So if you can see the kernel of uh, my real map, it's some subspace of codimension two typically. Then uh, this restriction to this kernel is strictly negative definite. And for any element gamma such that A gamma is non zero, this uh, value of quadratic form is strictly positive. So what you see, I see immediately that uh, uh, this, oh, sorry, I changed notation A of gamma. Uh, um, uh, elements of the lattice where I have non-trivial contribution have non-trivial central charge because otherwise it will stay in the kernel and you get contradiction. Okay, so it gets a strange condition and I, uh, I claim that implies that the set of values of central charge for this uh, uh, gamma which supported my uh, uh, this stability structure uh, is a discrete subset of complex numbers which doesn't contain zero and it has polynomially bounded density at infinity. In the sense of consider how many elements in a circle of a large radius, then this number will go at most polynomially and power is equal to the rank of the radius. Yeah, so let me just illustrate this picture. It's, the picture is better than formulas. In this case, um, imagine that my lattice is of rank three. So I get integer points in three-dimensional space. I project three-dimensional space to a plane and the kernel is some vertical line. Then I uh, make some quadratic form, which is, let's say, strictly negative on a vertical line and positive on horizontal plane. And uh, so the support will, will be set of integer points, which outside of these two um, cones. Uh, so it's something which rotates around uh, uh, this axis, and it projects to some discrete set in C. Yeah, that's that's a basic picture. 
Ok. Uh, so there's another viewpoint on support property. Uh, we can treat support properties uh, as, a, uh, as, as we have a kind of family of one parameter family of convex cones in a uh, typically half spaces. So this, the cones which were labeled by direction uh, by all directions in the plane by S1, uh, and uh, uh, the cone sits in a pre-image of the array and uh, this cone should be closed and intersect uh, kernel of map the R uh, by zero so it was R not right it's real numbers not radius and this family of cones should be some kind of uh, what you can call low semi-continuous uh, the, the definition is the union I just called C total just certain subspace in gamma r is a close is closed subset uh, subset and all, all um, and the c total minus zero um, will contain all uh, all the support of my elements a gamma let me just draw some picture um, i draw this family of cones again in like in three-dimensional case uh, when my uh, direction c runs only through some sector not the whole um, 360 degrees but on this small sector so it means that for each uh, ray I put a lift it will be some kind of two-dimensional uh, sector uh, upstairs but it uh, it's kind of uh, change changes when I rotate the ray so the, uh, the global things will be no longer convex it's kind of like one parameter family of convex of, uh, of, of angle sectors of um, such sides change continuously or semi-continuously when you rotate the ray. Now, so it's a uh, typical uh, local picture of this support. And uh, this quadratic form with something which kind of, um, uh, uh, kind of, you make it things larger and, uh, and the boundary make round. But it's, um, it's just for convenience. But in real, uh, in kind of in real life, uh, it's better to think it's really a family of cones and, uh, it's some kind of convex geometry in one direction and kind of arbitrary in, in, in the rotation parameter in theta. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. In, in this uh, in this definition, when I get a family of, of convex cones, it's also not unique. I can enlarge this family, so it will be another upper bound on the support. And um, and in this uh, second description, there is a minimal family of convex cones. Uh, uh, name, uh, namely, what do you do? You consider all rays passing through uh, this um, uh, lattice uh, uh, vectors gamma, which uh, support such that a gamma is in zero. So you get some infinite collection of uh, rays. Uh, then uh, you consider uh, closure of this set. You get some closed things, but it will be no longer convex. Uh, the intersection with, uh, with uh, pre image of the uh, ray on a plane will be no longer convex. So take convex hull, and uh, I think maybe you can make closure again. Uh, and then you get this minimal possible family of con or convex cones. Yeah, so you take closure, convex hulls along vertical direction, and then again closure. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so that's a more detailed picture of what was really goes, goes on. So uh, now uh, go back to to the example. Now, so this this notion looks very stupid. Yeah, just you have this support property. Uh, now, uh, uh, what I talked yesterday, uh, there was a situation when I have a compact complex manifold with holomorphic closed one form with uh, some number uh, isolated zeros which are all morphs and it's, so enumerate them and um, and then I talked about some canonical transformations which will be some n by n uh, form power series in many many variables as, uh, uh, associated to Stokes rays and Stokes rays are uh, you'll see in, in a moment yeah what is the corresponding stability structure so the lattice is the uh, first homology of x 
of a pair x and the set of zeros, which is my points, p1 up to pn, with coefficients in integers. So it's homology classes of pass connecting points, roughly, or linear combination of them. What is the central charge? The central charge, if you have a pass, you can integrate your one form or get a number. So you get a map from gamma to C. What is the Lie algebra? That's the main point. The Lie algebra uh, is Lie algebra of rational numbers and with, which has some linear basis. Um, where the element of the basis is uh, triple. Uh, uh, yeah, so have two indices, i and j, uh, labeling my zeros. Is a could, could, could coincide, could be different. And gamma is a homology class of a pass connecting pi with pj. Then the structure of Lie algebra is given by the commutator for the associative product. And the associative pro, uh, yeah, so in fact, it will be associative algebra, and then I go to break it. Uh, the associative product is defined the following if I have two base element, the product will be another base element if uh, the uh, end of one pass coincides with, with this beginning of another pass, and you add uh, come all the class of pass or zero otherwise. Yeah, so you just get kind of like non trivial composition, then you get composition of pass and you teach pass up to homology. Now, so you get certain Lie algebra. It's obviously graded by uh, lattice gamma because uh, you just said that your base element sits in the gradient, uh, graded component uh, gamma. And you see that the product is things add and the commutators also add. So it's a graded, a graded associative algebra. And Lie algebra will be also graded by gamma. Yeah, and then it's algebra can be realized it's subalgebra of matrices with coefficients in uh, form power series ring. Uh, actually, not form power series, it will be Laurent polynomial ring. Namely, uh, you can see the group ring of my uh, lattice gamma if gamma is just torsion free, like z to power k, it will be Laurent polynomials in k variables with coefficients in rational numbers. And the embedding is the following. So if you get this base element, you associate an elementary matrix uh, at row i and column j. Uh, and in this elementary matrix put element of this group ring, which is this, uh, homology class of the sparse gamma. Okay, so, so you just move this, uh, make this algebra a subalgebra of my algebra of matrices. And the transformations which I uh, 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 draw, uh, kind of explained yesterday, associated with Stokes rays, which are images of the central charge of elements gamma, mm. are, uh, belong to this uh, subalgebra, to, to the group associated to this uh, Lie algebra. So it will be again some invertible elements and some another associative algebra. Okay, so I get, uh, uh, so I get this transformation T theta, which I explained uh, last time. Mm -hmm. Go from one trivialization to one choice of basis in the first homology of, of a local system to another basis. And the transformations are, have the following form. Uh, this transformation is exponent of element of some uh, Lie algebra. And it turns out that this is Lie algebra, you get some of uh, elements of uh, whose grading is uh, element of my lattice, um, such that uh, uh, under the central charge, this element goes to my Stokes ray. Yeah, so it's, uh, that's a basic observation. So you get uh, this element and you decompose them, you get infinitely many Stokes rays, you take logarithm, take uh, graded coefficients and get bunch collection of A gammas. Yes, yeah, so it's, uh, that's it. But uh, I recall you in my definition of this stability structure, there's one, this uh, strange axioms, um, the support property. You get qu quadratic form of some convex horn. So you cannot, uh, this gamma cannot be very close to, to the kernel of map ZR. That's it. How to see it? And in fact, quadratic forms are sometimes in, in some equations of geometry, they're convenient and 
uh, uh, actually, actually maybe maybe here the first description this quadratic form will be more convenient uh, uh, I, i'm very mistaken so the support property follows from the following differential geometric candidate for c total we kind of a priori know that some elements gamma cannot be uh, uh, this uh, saddle connections gradient lines uh, and the, the, the description is it's really kind of tricky it's uh, some logic of this description is uh, complicated so uh, instead of say what is this uh, closed subset c total mm, oh so sorry here i go to set really to the second description uh, uh, e in, in, instead of desc describing this closed subset C total, I describe its complement, which will be open subset. And what I said, uh, what will be point of this uh, complement? Uh, let's take a real vector in my lattice. And uh, I, I define C this complement C total um, in the following way. First, it will contain the kernel of map ZR. Uh, that's that's a necessary condition because uh, c total should be disjoint from the kernel except zero uh, and uh, I, I, so here i mean a vector which is not equal to zero and uh, the second possibility uh, when the, this uh, central charge of gamma uh, of this vector is not zero then we'll do the following uh, if it's not zero then it ha will have certain uh, have non-zero complex number, it will have something uh, uh, non-zero central charge and you'll get certain argument, certain direction theta. And if uh, if we get direction theta, then we get a real one form, a real part of exponent minus theta of my complex one form. Okay, uh, so I'm reading a little bit backwards, so we get a theta, and now the conditions are falling. There exists a Hermitian, uh, uh, another real one form, alpha tilde, another closed one form, and a Hermitian metric G, uh, such that the following two inequalities hold. First of all, uh, you can pair uh, this hom a real homology class, which I loosely denote by integral, with my forms, alpha tilde, and with alpha c instead in fact here on the second part i can put uh, a theta because of this argument condition the integral will be really the integral of a theta but uh and the inequality is strict and the second condition uh, it's kind of pointwise inequality everywhere uh, namely if you take a inverse metric as a scalar product on cotangent bundle and take square of lengths of a theta then it will be great equals the sparing between a theta and alpha tilde yeah it's some kind of very strange differential geometric uh, constraints some kind of global inequality local inequalities but uh, what does it uh, this two condition imply if my uh, real vectors is happen to be a lattice vector then there will be no uh, subtle connection this class uh, the reason is the following you just uh, calculate the integral or, or you integrate of the saddle connection two forms alpha theta and alpha tilde and uh, this will uh, because of this you use a gradient flow uh, you, you get one inequality the integral of alpha theta is the integral of great alpha theta and that contradicts the first inequality yeah so 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 you kind of really have to minimize uh, along all kind of possible Hermitian metrics or closed one forms it's kind of complicated min, min max question because you have uh, two competing inequalities yeah so it's it's it's, it's really very very tricky geometry but uh, and from this it's not uh, and we describe this complicated family of uh, convex cones uh, and to the first description it's pretty easy to handle uh, from uh, as alpha tilde choose some basis on uh, whatever uh, uh, maybe kernel of map zr uh, 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 so, some basis of first cohomology uh, uh, and and then uh, this appropriate constant one can manage this condition for 
just any given a priori Hermitian metric and you get some quadratic form constraint. Yeah, so this type of argument appears in other questions in geometry. One can and try to think, uh, see that there is a support property, like for special Lagrangian manifolds in Calabi-Yau and things like this. Again, you play with differential forms now of high degrees and get again some kind of um, competing on opposite sides inequalities and point-wise and global and get the result. Yeah, so it's a very typical argument in the subject when you do some global geometry. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So it's uh, you see that it's pretty complicated uh, uh, support property, but uh, kind of rough estimates are pretty cheap. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, uh, that's to say why this uh, thing shows because in, is this support uh, is this um, whatever wall crossing things do not depend on the choice of um, Hermitian metric and uh, this uh, good choices which is hidden this criterion uh, will guarantee that there's no passes. Okay, now let's go on to the uh, back to the general story. Uh, one can try to see this. Uh, stability structure with a support property in the following way. Uh, so uh, suppose we ch fix this, uh, this map, the central charge, and uh, see what how we can encode in a different way this element A gamma. Now, first of all, let's consider on a plane as uh, the image of uh, where central charge lives, any angle sectors of this uh, uh, strictly less than pi. And uh, this angle sector uh, I, I, I will convenient to think that it's I remove zero and possibly I remove a left or right or both rays of its boundary. Yeah, so it could be semi, uh, semi closed sector or something like this, or it could be closed. Or, uh, there are four possibilities, but also I allow a limiting case when um, V is just a ray. So it's angle sectors of its zero kind of limiting expression. And then, um, uh, yeah, so we have this notion of a sector, which includes a particular example of the array. And, and uh, first I associate some uh, group element and some group for array. If I have group element, I get exponent of this uh, sum. So in my concrete example, it's well just my transformation T theta, if, if, uh, if this is stocks ray. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but in abstract situation, it's element of some pronial potent group associated to the Lie, uh, Lie algebra, and namely you consider strict cone C theta and look all uh, elements of the lattice, non zero elements of the lattice in this strict cone and take the product of corresponding components until the pronial potent group, Lie algebra take pronial potent group, and AL is element of this pronial potent group. Yeah. Uh, this element uh, is uh, 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 typically identity element as a group is identity uh, because um, if there's no uh, lattice vector which uh, projects to, to the ray, uh, then uh, uh, there's nothing to talk about, the sum is empty, and there are only countably may, many rays uh, uh, to talk about. Okay, uh, uh, sorry, uh, is it okay because I saw this uh, message that there's some kind of disconnection? Are you still connected? Hello? Yeah, you're connected, oh, oh. No, no problem. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we get elements associated to race, and now we have this possibly semi open sector. Then we take all product of, sorry. Uh, should, should theta uh, or all rays L sitting in V take product of all, all rays of this corresponding element and it product in a clockwise order. It's kind of very weird product. Uh, it's not uh, just one, two, three, so on. It's it's like rational number. So it's no first, no, no the last. It's everywhere then set, but it makes sense in the prof is this point important group because you truncate uh, consider uh, lattice vectors sufficient to short to get only finitely many. 
uh, uh, race to talk about. And this is element of what? It's element of pronyl potent group associated to this trick cone, which is convex hull of this C tot intersected with this uh, pre image. Maybe I'll just go back a little bit to my picture. Yeah, so for example, here, if we take this uh, uh, sector V, which is drawn below, we take pullback, it's something very, very non convex. And you take, take, take convex hull, uh, you get some larger. Um, um, uh, larger convex hull, which is already kind of not trivial for in, in the case of quadratic forms. If you consider these guys, you take pre image of some ray, you get something slightly non convex in these directions. Okay, so we get this uh, elements of uh, larger groups. And this element of larger group uh, 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 can be uniquely uh, uh, decomposed in. Uh, in Mm. Factors, uh, and but factors will lie up in some bit larger Lie algebras because you know, take convex hull intersect with pullbacks to get larger convex uh, convex cones. But mm, if you kind of allow to enlarge my groups and uh, that you get kind of one to one correspondence. Uh, so so instead of speaking about infinitely many. Uh, uh, elements AL for all, all possible stocks mm. race in the sector. I just can speak about just one element AV, which is still sits in some mm, group associated with some cone. And this element satisfy uh, obviously factorization property. If I have uh, my, uh, if I have two uh, uh, sectors which are disjoint, and uh, the unions again sector of uh, uh, width uh, less than pi, and v1 is on the left of v2. Mm. Then uh, one can make this uh, one have this decomposition because you take one product of uh, race in v1, another product of race in v2, and make it together, get the total product. Yeah, it's all obvious. Uh, and when you make the decomposition, you see that you uh, you are obliged to consider sectors which are uh, sometimes have or sometimes have not uh, um, a race, uh, the boundary race, because otherwise it will be not disjoint in the union. So, for example, here V1 have, uh, uh, has, uh, has its right ray and V2 doesn't have its left ray. And um, yeah, so it will be half of our closed things. Okay. Uh, so, so you see that what's going on for a given central charge, in order to specify stability structure, it's sufficient to pick arbitrary collection. Just to, to carry, you see this uh, finitely many this disjoint semi-open uh, sectors, and pick element for this uh, sectors, and arbitrary, uh, arbitrary with, with no constraints. And in this case, you see that minimal number of sectors which you can use is three. You take like three uh, semi-open sectors of size uh, 120 degrees, by 2 pi over 3. But it's really not convenient. And in real life situation, it's more convenient to have more sectors to describe your situation. And in my yesterday uh, talk, uh, the optimal number is eight, not uh, not. Uh, not three. Yeah, for uh, what I explained um, in, uh, in the last talk is that I gave a formula for, for transformation associated to this um, first pos open quadrant when um, uh, kind of real and imaginary part of complex number are strictly positive. Uh, because it's boundary slightly uh, rotated to the left horizontal axis, slightly rotated to the axis, vertical axis. But it doesn't cover the whole uh, circle of direction. And uh, of course, one can make uh, uh, for other quadrants. And actually, it's very convenient in uh, the example which I explained yesterday, because uh, this uh, um, example of my genus, genus to curve is the abelian differential was invariant on the action of rotation by 90 degrees. So one can, if um, so, example which I gave for first quadrant already gives example for all, all other 
three quadrants by applying uh, some zimor for action but it still not covers the whole uh, direction because also should have uh, what i miss i miss uh, uh, open coordinate semi axis going to both and both different negative directions one can also calculate very easily formulas by comparing two bases in similar way to explained yesterday and get the complete description of this whole crossing structure so it'll be eight uh, sectors four of them are degenerate and four are open okay yeah so one can uh, understand stability structure in, in a different way now so what what described it's kind of canonical description of stability structure uh, for each uh, stocks uh, ray you have group element or maybe you have kind of a bit non canonical when you choose uh, covering by uh, disjoint sectors finitely many group elements but still something very very canonical and another the next description will be it's kind of not canonical it's like describe manifold is using some atlas charts and could have different atlas different charts so it will be some equivalence classes of something uh, namely uh, we start with the following definition which is uh, looks a bit strange uh, if i have an array in a in C, then I define a big group uh, associated to the array as a limit of group uh, 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 inductive limit of a group of uh, of pronial potent cones. It's an inductive limit, and uh, the cones are the, of the following type. It's a cones in my uh, real vector space gamma r, with the property is that it's uh, project properly to C, and its image uh, could be very very big. It could be almost 180 degrees but should be strictly less than 180 degrees so it should lie in the sector of width less than pi and and the sector has this bisector is uh, my uh, ray l so I, I go to the left to the right to not exactly 90 degrees but maybe 85 degrees and consider very big cone there yeah so you get uh, uh, this very very big group it's not as a group associated to uh, per image of the uh, rates something larger okay now uh to describe stability st structure I, I have the following i just have, have, have find collection of rays and some elements of these groups without any relations whatsoever between them now i would, should introduce some equivalence relation first of all i i start start to rotate rays um, without collision so they're still disjoint uh, in such a way that this um, element still belong to the corresponding group. So this, this cone still projects in a, in a nice way. Uh, yeah, so it start to rotate. And then another thing, uh, uh, when I allow collisions of rays, or, or maybe rays will be decomposed in two rays, suppose my group element for one rate is a product of two another group elements, j prime, j double prime. Then I can rotate a little bit ray, replace my ray by two close ray nearby. This j prime, j double prime will still make sense for these two rays. And l a prime will be on the left of and l double uh, double prime on the right, and associated elements to, to this uh, new rays, respectively. And this generates equivalence relation. So it's like I have this group elements associated to rays, and I just replace g2 by G2 prime, G2 double prime, such so that it's a product. So locally, I don't change the product. If I go to so, so, small composition, it will be the same. Yeah, that's the basic idea. And the theorem, which is um, very elementary, but it's the proof is quite long. We have the other paper on analytic stability structure where we um, propose this definition that equivalence classes of these connections when you start to rotate rays and uh, uh, these elements and multiply them or decompose them is in one-to-one -one correspondence with space stability structures yeah it's completely different perspective and uh, of course it's kind of not unique description but with this description uh, the kind of reasonable stability structure one can describe an um, kind of finitely many words you choose finitely many rays and elements g are happens in good situation to be kind of nice like rational rational valued functions or rational diffeomorphism or 
variational dimorphism or algebraic um, something not not totally transcendental and um, in the canonical description get comfortably many things and the series uh, uh, tends to be transcendental yeah so that's with the second definition one can define um, very easily what is a topology on the space of stability structures not what is continuous family of stability structures in given the algebra uh, it's a notion which you are originally defined in kind of more complicated way using some projective limits and so on so we deform continuously uh, central charge it's clear but uh, in the second description uh, uh, we keep the same representative sorry not L, uh, gi Oh, no, actually, it's the same representative L, I, and J, I as well, yeah. So you just keep L, I, J, I, change central charge. So still, uh, J sits in a good concern. That's it. Uh, and uh, the fact, which is kind of not obvious from the second definition, but uh, it, it was kind of built in a original more complicated description of topology on the space of stability structure is that it's um it's it's really kind of like it it, it tiles space over uh space uh, complex vector space of central charges so for any continuous pass in the space of quantum charges and stability structure and uh, initial point there exists at most one continuous family of stability structures in all t for small t one can extend a little bit and large t you cannot so the so the uh, what really goes on um for this topology uh, it's Hausdorff topology and continuous and connected component components are space which are maps to space uh, to the space of linear maps from gamma to c uh, by a local homeomorphism so the, it's kind of Hausdorff a tile space mm. okay what is now the main message uh, if i have continuous families of complex manifolds with one forms let's say with more zeros then the corresponding family of stability structures also continues yeah that's uh, that means that uh, by this uniqueness result which i just mentioned before if you know for some variety with one form of this stability structure then you know for anything which, which can be obtained by deformation an explanation is the following. So, uh, so this continuity of this uh, stability structure can be reformed still in another way. Uh, namely, uh, we have certain parameter space on which we deform and now uh, multiplies with parameter space by the circle of directions. And in this product, we'll have uh, uh, something which is called wall crossing structure. Uh, uh, and this is going to continuity. The wall crossing structure means that you have a dense countable connection of some hypersurfaces, walls, uh, and it happens when I have this whatever element A gamma and a certain direction of zero gamma, it will be this walls. So I get this countable everywhere dense collection of hypersurfaces, but uh, uh, locally one can imagine that uh, there could be finitely many in, in certain sense. And uh, uh, and on these hypersurfaces, I get uh, uh, they decompose by kind of like small open pieces uh, by other hypersurfaces. And on the complement, I, I have locally constant shift of least subalgebras outside of codimension two. And uh, and then I have locally constant system of jumps, which across and across the wall, I get element of corresponding some important group. And that is some discrete flatness conditions in codimension two real dimension two. What are these Lie algebras? These are different Lie algebras in comparison to what I considered before. For the generic point of a wall, this Lie algebra will be the following guy. It's, I consider some primitive ele vector in my lattice, non-zero primitive vector, and uh, take its all, multi all integer multiples, and to get this uh, group Lie, uh, Lie algebra graded by positive integers, and take this Lie algebra, and maybe take product to get pretty important group. And uh, discrete flatness condition codimension uh, two deals with two, uh, the following things. You consider now two primitive vectors which are not parallel, 
and consider there all linear combinations which are non-zero, so like two positive numbers, or, or maybe two negative numbers, but both non-zero. You take the algebra graded by kind of like positive integer of quadrant. And uh, for reasons, that will get two opposite orderings. And uh, what goes on in this um, whole crossing structure, you get something in two dimension two, you get uh, um, uh, infinitely moles, many walls interse intersecting this two dimension two stratum. And then if you go around in one direction, you get product of certain transformations, uh, uh, like in this Yaldrovin, you get ratio of K1, K2 equal to AB, and go to another, get another transformation and one product is equal to another product, but here uh, you're labeled by rational numbers from zero to infinity in, in increasing orders or decreasing order. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's the basic situation. And uh, that's uh, um, another way to say what you get, this locally constant kind of continuous family of all crossing structures. And these things, uh, if one tries to a little bit, uh, think a little bit, uh, this local discrete is it's kind of obvious in our situation. Uh, and jumps appear uh, because the walls appear when uh, you, you get this uh, nasty uh, subtle connections. It's something when, uh, I'll let explain, local to global beta isomorphism fails. So you don't have uh, basis in, in first homology and so on. So this left symbols fail to be uh, closed elements. Uh, but what is important in order to make this argument work, we need uh, um, uh, and have the feasibility to vary central charge with sufficiently many parameters, finitely many parameters. So the central charge covers an open domain in home gamma C. In fact, it's enough real half of parameters so it's real part of gamma should co cover an open domain. Uh, yeah, so, and it's okay for uh, 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 like uh, square tile surfaces, uh, no, square tile surfaces are very special, so like rational points, but if you consider a, a complex curve is a billion differentials, the modular space is sufficiently large, and then you get um, this um, possibility to move to kind of generic or rational central charge. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's um, important uh, point here is this also that in the definition of this uh, left of symbols, we use Hermitian metrics and Hermitian space of Hermitian metrics, there's no walls in this direction because the whole condition is purely cohomological, it's about periods. Now that's uh, the only way we kind of complex geometry plays its play its role. Uh, so the color is that, uh, as we calculated a uh, wall crossing structure, more or less for this very uh, specific case, some square tilt sur surface, then we can, um, ch by changing uh, uh, this complex structure, can recalculate a wall crossing structure for arbitrary abelian differential simple zeros. And in, in this way, we calculate number of subtle connections on arbitrary um, uh, curve by algebraic manipulation with, uh, with of very strange uh, type. We do this decom decomposition of infinite products and, uh, and recompositions for this, some explicit rational functions, rational matrix related functions. Yeah, so it's kind of really kind of dramatically new way to interpret subtle connections. And now, uh, yeah, so I'll explain these things and now I'll just uh, finish with some uh, generalizations. The story really has a uh, huge potential. It's not only the uh, uh, square tile surfaces. First of all, one can consider uh, varieties with non morphs and not isolated singularities. Yeah, in general, if you consider global complex variety, it's something very rigid, like algebraic variety. And it's not sensical to speak about more singularities. It's something of a general position because we have only finitely many parameters and not enough. And even there are cohomological reasons why you cannot achieve more singularity. For example, suppose you have a variety and such an early characteristic of X has a wrong size. So it says it's, it's, one cannot have all cohomology in the middle degree. 
And the same will happen for early resubscriptions of local system. And then immediately you see that you, it cannot have uh, just isolated zeros. Zeros are always non-isolated for one form by, by this cohomological reason. Yeah, so it's very robust uh, global reason. And now, so you can see the very general um, arbitrary one form, close, close homework one form. And in the space of zero, it's very complicated. It has been very singular components of very different dimension, but it has finitely many connected component. And for each connected component, one can, in small neighborhood, one can represent as a differential of a function, which vanishes on the set of zeros. Yeah, so you get this canonical function near set of zeros. Uh, now consider uh, the following uh, uh, homology group. Yeah, so a fixed degree in which I'm interested in homology, it's uh, R. And then consider homology of the pairs, this my small tubular neighborhood and pull back of a number epsilon by this function, complex number epsilon, very small. And in this way, I get a, a local system of the circle of direction, depends on the argument of epsilon, of uh, some graded vector space or rational numbers, which are called vanishing cycles. It's um, yeah, that's really, uh, uh, yeah, for more singularity, it's only one matching cycles, but in middle degree and here it's could be other cycles as degrees. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, there are misprints. And uh, the, um, as in the case of isolated singularities, there's no subtle connections for gradient flow for generic theta, but again, by cohomological reasons, by the same reasons. You cannot go from one, um, uh, component to uh, in another to itself, uh, unless you get this uh, Stokes ray. And and the claim that if, 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 I, if I don't have the subtle connection by, by cohomological reasons, I will have a canonical isomorphism between uh, homology of my space risk efficiency in a local system and uh, any local system and, and, uh, and uh, direct sum of homology of Kind of like vanishing cycles with coefficients of the local system. Yeah, before I talk about uh, case of vanishing cycle, then uh, uh, this is uh, a little bit generalization. If um, connected components are one connected or have trivial first homology, then it will be the same as homology of vanishing cycles. That's why it's a little bit more general. Yeah, L is an uh, arbitrary local system, uh, uh, but with coefficients in non Archimedean field, such that. Uh, corresponding homology class and first homology with real coefficients, as I explained yesterday, is sufficiently nice. It's less in some domain. Uh, so it has a representative uh, one form for which the gradient flow is gradient like. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, this choice of basis, it's a particular example when uh, this R is middle dimension and it's, the spaces are one dimensional. So the idea is to stretch with the flow my. Uh, vanishing cycles and to get something which uh, the limit will be actual cycles. Yeah, we have local vanishing cycles. It's some kind of like, like chain with a boundary nearby, near each component of zero certain dimension. And when you stretch the flows, it became very long, but still disjoint because my, my conditions are no gradient lines. So they will be absolutely disjoint. And, uh, and then um, the boundaries uh, will tends to zero because if I put my local system, I'll get something like exponential small contribution for the boundary. And then the limit, it will be uh, literally zero. Yeah, so this is a uh, pure topological constructions based on the property of gradient lines that small neighborhoods uh, then consider this stable, unstable, not manifold such sets, they just joined. Yeah, that's it. I have just this jointness of stable and unstable sets, and uh, that's the only thing which I needed. And this is a uh, this is a local to global beta isomorphism, and yeah, it seems to be new. Yeah, it's, 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 it's all my story. It's about this local to global beta isomorphism. Yeah, uh, one can describe in more general situation what is a uh, Lie algebra, what is a grading, but uh, uh, let me skip it. It just it's. Uh, it's a kind of pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. So, so six generalized to arbitrary 
comp complex manifold with one forms with arbitrary zeros. Then can also treat the non-compact case as well. Yeah, first we start with real manifolds. Uh, so uh, one can think uh, uh, instead of real manifold, non-compact real manifolds, it's more convenient to think about manifold with the boundary. And the picture is the following. Uh, so in real picture, in kind of more snarky story, we can imagine that X is a manifold with, not really with boundary, with the corners. And the uh, corners, uh, of code up to codimension two, and the boundary has union of three three manifolds with the boundary, and the common boundary with codimension two corners, kind of negative parts, horizontal parts, and positive parts, and so that they do disjoint. And maybe I'll just get pictures better than words. You have uh, like imagine square and get left side, right side, and both horizontal sides. And now uh, uh, the idea is the following: suppose we can Change, uh, pick a one form and uh, we have one form and pick a metric such that gradient flow uh, um, will enter at d minus, will exit at d plus, and will be tangent and non zero in d horizontal. So it's not vanish, no, uh, it doesn't vanish on boundary at all. So it's always non, non, non vanishing boundary. And all zeros of or gradient flow or critical points or zeros of one form will be strictly inside. Uh, and then, uh, when, you when you consider more snarky complex as a situation, it's well defined and calculate cohomology of pair x and d negative x, d minus d negative x with coefficients local system which lies in appropriate tube domain. Okay, what do we in a complex case? In a complex case, uh, again, if my complex manifold is um, has real corners of codimension two. And metric is Hermitian, and uh, again, this cohomological condition of periods. So stable and unstable sets do not intersect each other. Then I get again the local to global beta isomorphism. And but it's kind of complex manifold is real boundaries. It's uh, not what uh, one meets in the practice. Yeah. So for example, I would like to apply this to meromorphic closed one form on ability. Uh, algebraic varieties. And then uh, near poles uh, have complex devices when form has poles and one should control divisors. And there are two basic scenarios, there are logarithmic poles or higher poles and the story is a bit complicated and uh, it's pretty interesting but uh, the whole details are really nasty. Okay, now uh, uh, what should be application to uh, this question was called resurgence. I explain in, in, in a few minutes what is a resurgence. Suppose I get, let's say, projective algebraic variety with a meromorphic closed one form alpha, which has more zero at some point, and maybe other zeros not isolated. I don't care. But then uh, near this point, you can have unique function which is, can be written sum of squares, and my form is differential, and let's. Beta will be a meromorphic again rational and form which is non singular at P0. Form of degree M is dimension of X. So it's top degree form. And now I can integrate um, ex uh, exponent minus function divided by H bar, multiply by form beta. So I get form of top degree. But now I integrate to some real cycles, like let's say ZI will be real variables close to zero. The integral will be convergent. And it will have some asymptotic expansion. Asymptotic expansion will start with uh, things coming from Gaussian, H bar minus MO2, and then some series in H bar. Uh, the claim is that the coefficient of the series will glow factorially. And if you make a Borel transform, we divide by k factorial, make generic series. The conjecture is that it's, uh, it says it's the meaning of the virtual search is that this new function admits endless analytic continuations, uh, uh, even consider the generic pass in complex plane, and singularity is given by the image of the central charge, uh, this integrals of one form between two, two zeros. Uh, yeah, so it's a um, general conjecture, and I expect this Helmholtz-Morsnoyko theory will provide the proof of this. Yeah, there is a, a, a basic example. Uh, uh, you consider CP1, this form is dz minus dz over z, it's one form, another form is dz over z, uh, the critical point of function, uh, function z more 
log z near point one. And now I can see there's an integral. And I can, instead of very small neighborhood, you can integrate from zero to infinity. And this integral after you put this uh, calculator, you see gamma function uh, multiplied by this uh, correction term. And this is essentially Stirling formula. So the resurgent property can be proven directly in this case and the body transform uh, for this uh, terms of Hilbert form is a multivalent function which has singularities is two pi i integers, which is exactly the set of periods. So it's kind of elementary confirmation of this general conjecture. Yeah, now I'll go to this almost last uh, topic, the super generalization, almost holomorphic form. In fact, it's something from which I should start from, from the very beginning. Uh, there is the following. Uh, uh, I, I recall that for case of curves with abelian differential, we have nice Torelli theorem, we have many, many deformations, and we can get any class in, uh, close to what we have in first relative homology. But it's no longer true in high dimension because it's uh, uh, global analysis is too rigid and varieties could be rigid, no, have no deformation, so one forms, yeah, it's not clear what to do. And uh, in order to prove continuity, one needs a sufficient large family of one forms. And such a central charge covers an open domain. It seems to be kind of impossible. And this is really necessary to, to have a clean proof of continuity of stability structures. And uh, my proposal is the following. Instead of complex manifolds and uh, holomorphic form, I choose almost complex structures, almost holomorphic closed one forms. And what does it mean almost holomorphic, uh, namely, uh, it means the following. This is Hermitian metric and some constants less, strictly less than one. So that for this Hermitian metric point twice, you consider zero one comp norm of zero one uh, part of my form. It will be bounded by constant C times one zero part of the form. Now, for example, if it's purely uh, holomorphic form, it means that zero one part is vanishes. Yeah, so it's uh, the dom dom strictly dominating part is one zero part. And this is a really very, very nice class of forms. First one can prove that if you locally make its image differential some function, the, the critical uh, values will be isolated. So one can speak about vanishing cycles. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then it, in fact, all steps in the construction of local to global beta isomorphism work. So it's, it's, it's very um, soft notion. And the deformation theory seems to be much more soft. And at least when you start with some Calabria variety or non Calabria variety with one form, then uh, the abstraction of kind of very rigid deformation theory shows that one get a domain in, in the cohomology space on the period map. Yeah, so there are really plenty of such uh, uh, things. And, um, I think the critical locus has uh, this pro uh, nice properties that has stratified by even dimensional strata. So it's very, very close to complex analysis. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so you see that this will be basically topology, uh, the whole story, n n no rigid complex analysis. And maybe I'll just finish with a couple of words uh, that in um, uh, analytistic issues. It was a question by of Novikov original in the original story about the exponential growth of number of subtle connections. Yeah, that's a difficult question in dynamical system, and uh, the reason is because a subtle connection can spend too long time along uh, other critical uh, near other critical points, and there's no way to control it. Yeah, in the theory of all crossing structure, uh, uh, Jan and me we introduced uh, about a year ago notion of analytic stability structure. And as there is, uh, and uh, the simplest uh, way to say it is, is, is using non canonical description in terms of race and group elements. Namely, there is a representation, a re this representation, the group elements are analytic, drums of analytic transformations. And it's a tricky geometric result. Uh, uh, we have that this property is invariant under continuous deformations. Uh, and it's not clear that this kind of more naive analytic, uh, analytic properties. This uh, element, say gamma, have exponential growth. Uh, uh, sorry, it's misprint. It implies this property things, but it's 
you don't know how to prove it already for maybe five, six years to try to prove it. It seems to be very, very hard and uh, very, very to find question and analysis. And the related question, do we have exponential bound for the Barrett, uh, Barrett transform restricted to non stack rays? Is the procedure necessary to process an inverse Barrett transform, make Laplace transform? That's how usually people want to reconstruct uh, actual analytic function from divergent series. And for this, you need some kind of convergence of integral of infinity, which is sometimes for free, but in this situation, it's, we don't know what is going on. Yeah, yeah, so there are uh, very murky analytic questions around, and, but uh, this notion of analytic stability structure seems to save uh, the situation. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, thanks for your inspiring lecture again. Uh, thanks him again. Uh, uh, we are grateful that you accepted the lecture and give a wonderful lecture. Okay, okay thank thank, thanks again and hope to see you again.